of you is first time and then me. And yeah, please fill up the the pool so that at least I'll know like how many people is the first time. So I have one person that's first time attending. Cool. So most of the most of the people here is more like uh, regular. So okay, so today is Friday. Jin will be talking about uh, cat and oil. So this uh, webinar is going to be very beneficial for all those long term investors and also traders for short term trade. So highlighting like uh, targets and risk. So a uh, very important disclaimer that uh, any information shared during this session is not intended to be trade recommendation. Uh, it's solely for opinion and view of the speaker. So please remember to do your own analysis prior to entering any trades. So uh, Jin, so uh, this disclaimer, so I'm Kenneth here. I've known Jin for about four years. So first as a student and uh, now become a business partner at, in Forex with case. So Jin run LCMS Traders and Forex with case, trader and a million dollar uh, trader. So well, it means that he also has been invited in many stage globally. And also uh, if you might have seen him presenting in an event or attend one of his course previously. So uh, while we are about to get started, let me see where did you heard from us. Uh, and please help me put in the pool. Okay, from here. We have about 20. 20 people here, so I'd like to know, even like those on the people regular, please let us know that where do you come from? So about 11, oh, meetup group, cool. Come on, I only got 14 people filling up, so there's still about six more people, where do you heard about this group? Okay, so this time I'll pass over to Jim to uh, uh, have the analysis projection. Thank you, Kenneth. How's everyone doing today? Well, I was just, I was just telling, um, I was just saying that feeling a bit uninspired today. So let's hope that you guys can be a bit more interactive. Uh, what I have is um, I'm running this. Um, on Facebook Live. It's not on my profile this time. It is on the Forex Trading Asia group. So those of you who are in the Forex Trading Asia group, if you can, um, if you see this and you'd like to join in the Zoom call, you know, the link will be there. Jump into the Zoom call. Um, those of you who can, who are in the Zoom call right now, you know, if you give me a big help is to share the video on Forex Trading Asia, share it and then we can get more people into this call, share my analysis with as many people as I can, <coughs> right? So um, market has been a little bit funny, has been a little bit different, um, has been a little bit more volatile than we expected before. Um, we have been doing quite a few more videos, quite a number of you I see uh, joined us last night at the live trading session for the Trader Club members. So um, quick thumbs up if you enjoyed the session yesterday, the session last night, the live trading session. All right. So um, we made, some of you made a little bit of money, you know, a lot of us didn't do anything. Um, but on hindsight, not doing anything really did save us a lot of potential um, heartache or money ache. So <coughs> today we'll be talking about the CAD and the WTI, the oil prices. And then I, I do anticipate that there's not much to catch up on that. So I'll do a bit of a review about what we have talked about through the week as well, because I'm particularly happy about how I've been projecting the currency pairs this week. So let's get started. 
All right. If you have any questions, put it in the um, Zoom chat or put it into the Facebook live chat and comments as well. One of the guys with the spiffy backgrounds here will get back to you on that. Uh, let me jump into the charts. All right. So this is the USD CAD daily time frame chart. Um, there's a US CAD on the daily time frame. <laughs> For the past several sessions, right, I've always been saying it's sitting at the line of 1.04, uh, possibly coming downwards, testing that line, you know, could shoot up, could shoot down, testing that line, possibly coming back downwards. It tried to come down, it's retesting that line again. So it's really been hugging on to that support slash resistance line of 1.4012 um, and it's tried to go down couldn't try to go back up couldn't really move that much as well so it's testing that line at this point um, at this point I'm not going to bore you again telling you that um, it could go up it could go down I do think that um, we could see a move upwards. I'll stick my neck out and say we could see a little bit of a move upwards. Why I say that there are triggers in terms of what could happen to oil, uh, which could lead to um, impact in the uh, USD CAD as well. So um, as it retest this resistance level, now, now resistance level, you know, I do anticipate that it could shoot back up. Um, let's let Robbie in. It could be maybe 150 pips stop loss with, I don't think it'll go all the way to 400, you know, possibly maybe even 300 pips. So maybe that way. So a, a 150 to 300 pips stop loss, that might be a trade. Um, that we could be looking for um, but it does need to close above that re resistance zone now of maybe above 1.4060 1.4070 so it needs to go above that before we jump into a trade uh, with 150 pip stop loss and then 300 take profit uh, again as Kenneth did mention disclaimer you know if you're going to jump into any trades that I'm talking about, do your own analysis. These are really just my views, uh, how I read the market. Uh, think about your risk, think about your capital, think about um, your, your, your style of trading as well. So, you know, different ways to trade, the different methods, the different charts as well. So, you know, I do anticipate that that could move upwards um, about 300 pips. Why I think that we'll jump into the triggers later. That's on a daily time frame on H4. Uh, we can see that it's tried to really come back up, test that um, resistance again. Price action slash indicators are telling me that that move upwards is quite possible. Um, it does need to break above this level though. So like I said, 1.4070 is about there. Could move 150 to 300 pips upwards um, would it move straight away I don't actually think so so I think in a shorter to medium term it's probably gonna sit there like that um, move a little bit before that big upwards move all right so uh, we can see that happening the Forex factory let me just jump into Forex factory now all right so on Forex factory not much news relating to the CAD, right? Apart from a bit of a manufacturing PMI, but not much news relating to CAD happening this today. Or let me see next week, because we're at the end of the week, you know, you want to think about something next week as well. Monday, again, not much happening. Japan is closed. Um, Tuesday, Japan is still closed bit of a rate statement that'd be very interesting. So Monday, I'll be talking about Aussie's rate statement coming up. Um, bit of trade balance, not much, not much. All right, so nothing much. Um, no 
apart from Fridays and employment data. So nothing much triggering the TED in terms of economic data, even in terms of the US data as well, not much going to be affecting the US TED apart from what's going to, what's likely to happen in oil because oil impacts um, CAD quite significantly. So what's likely to happen in oil, the developments in terms of um, news happening in oil, I will find that one news that has been quite interesting. Um, ta -ta -ta, let me scroll down and find it here. All right, so Trump told Saudis, let me just bring that up on a bigger screen for you. So Trump told Saudis, you know, cut oil supply or lose U.S. military support. Quite a big, quite a big threat, right? Quite a big threat. So they're looking to cut oil. They're, Trump is trying to pressure um, the Saudis into cutting oil supply. If they do cut oil supply, what do you think is going to happen to oil prices? Likely, we're going to see oil prices uh, jump up a little bit because as supply drops, um, prices is likely to increase. With that said as well, demand. Demand is probably going to um, expect it to increase a little bit as well. Why? Because you start seeing um, all small countries and more, more areas relaxing their travel restrictions, re relaxing a little bit of the um, restrictions in place because of the virus. So we could see a little bit of a pickup in terms of travel. Um, both car travel and air travel. So with that increasing, we could also see a demand in oil increasing as well. So as prices for oil increase, we could see, let me just jump back into the charts again. Oops. All right. So with prices for oil increasing, we could see um, the US can stabilizing a little bit and possibly a little bit of a um, increase because of the US dollar now looking like, you know, they're trying to stimulate the economy. We could see a little bit of increase in the US dollar. So CAD is probably going to stabilize with US dollar increasing. That's why I see that we could see a little bit of an upward move in terms of the US CAD. So a little bit of a different view compared to expecting oil prices to increase uh, therefore, increasing demand for CAD, um, therefore, a downward move in the US CAD. I actually see that a stabilization in oil prices or a slight increase in oil prices could stabilize the Canadian dollar, which would have, which will allow the US dollar to have a little bit more impact and push it up a little bit more. Okay, so um, let me just jump into the chat and make sure I've not missed out any questions. So suggest question on any news on oil upcoming, um, just shared with you, not particular about oil um, supply, but Trump trying to pressure oil, oil supplies. Um, okay, so not much questions there. So, wait, hang on. I just saw a question flash up. Okay, cool. All right, so um, then jumping into oil prices, Right, so oil here, let me just zoom in. Again, as I've been saying, you know, oil don't don't look to trade oil in the smaller time frame. I think at this point it's still a little bit more volatile um, in terms of what could happen to oil. You know, the pressure to cut might not actually translate into an actual cutting um, of supply. So that could bring in some volatility again, but we seem to have found a base at the 1527 level um, from previous time when we spoke, you know, it's dropped to that level and then now it seems to be bouncing back up. At this point, can it go up towards the 28? I don't actually think it will go from 20 to 28, uh, maybe 25 level before, before fluctuating at that point again. So, um, I don't see a lot of upside in terms of oil, um, although there are some, uh, some movements upwards, okay? So, as a recap, quick recap, I told you that, you know, cat and oil is going to be quite quick. Um, we could see a little bit of an upward move in oil prices because of the pressures to cut 
supply, we could see a little bit of an increase in demand um, because of relaxing the travel restrictions, a little bit of a relaxation of the travel restrictions. Um, we could see CAD moving slightly upwards over the short to medium term before an overall move upwards again. Okay, so any questions on the US CAD and or oil for before I jump into other into a review of the other currency pairs? Everyone happy? Everyone good? All right, a couple of nods of the head. All right, so I wanted to jump, one well, I really wanted to jump back into a couple of other um, charts, um, especially the Aussie US, because we have some big news coming up next week. Aussie US, um, during the start of the week, I shared that you know it could go up to that level before possibly coming back down again. So it's actually done pretty close to what I was saying, you know, um, you know, it could go up to this level. I have not adjusted the lines. So it's got up to that level. We could see it retesting back down again. This vertical line, I was talking to the Trader Club members about um, a potential trade that we were looking at. So Trader Club members, that trade idea is still in play. We'll probably have to see how this candle closes up. All right, so um, Tuesdays, news is going to be quite important um on the kiwi same thing it retested up looks like it's trying to come back down still has a little bit more move to go um euro we spoke about it to death yesterday i'm not going to repeat that but i'm just going to say that at least we didn't get into a trade because of that big shoot up euro pound i remember derek asking me a question whether we could sell you know it's still re it's still testing that support slash resistance level so don't touch it uh, pound it's moving as slightly as i expected you know a slight move upwards with a possible overall move upwards further upwards again retesting that resistance so it's done part one of that move i'm looking to see whether we'll do part two um us yen you know uh it's retested so i said on h4 at this point, it could retest the resistance before possibly moving downwards. It's retested. Part one is done. Will it do part two? We have to wait for that to develop. Um, Euro yen. I love this trade because yesterday I was telling everyone, uh, if you haven't sold, don't sell anymore. more. It could bounce back up um, off this resistance of 11640 uh, and look what it did. It went straight up. You know, good 80 pips there. If you jumped into that trade bouncing upwards, let me know. Let me know. I want to see if uh, my information I'm sharing here has helped your trading. Um, but I really did like pound yen here. I look at it on the four hour chart. You know, I, I was sharing with all of you yesterday about pound yen where it was sitting in a range, uh, a idea of a straddle, strategy of a straddle where if it breaks above 13350, we look to buy, put in a buy order. If it broke below 13228, uh, you know, we could look to sell. So that idea of a straddle with a 150 pip stop loss um, and a potential 170 pips take profit, it hit, right? It went exactly as we expected. The downward move didn't go, but it's following that line. So it's retested that resistance of 135.43 um, looks like it's coming back down now that trade's done and dusted um, i wouldn't be looking to sell it back down or buy it back up at this point it's going to sit there for a little bit uh, we'll wait for another trade to develop again right so um, gold as well gold has came back down so yesterday i shared that it's possibly going to come back down test the support of one six nine two before possibly going back up again it's testing that support um i think that it's going to test that support for a little bit more before if it does go back up uh will it go back up straight away definitely not it's probably going to test that level so be a bit patient with gold there all right so um 
while I jump into that, while you digest that information, um, a lot of that information, so, it sounds like a lot right now, but I want to share with you LCMS Traders Club. This is where a lot of the information now that I flood to you comes to you um, as we go through the week. So LCMS Traders Club, first thing I'll tell you is we have a Traders Challenge. Every month we have a Traders Challenge the top prize will win 2000 um, cash prize. So that's a very, you know, you not only make money in your trades, you make money being the best trader as well in our group, $2,000 cash prize. Uh, we run polls in LCMS Traders Club. We have our currency calls, uh, hostings on this call as well. You know, when you see yen moving, you put a question in, you ask why is it moving, we share our information there. We have updates from Kenneth and all the other coaches as well, uh, sharing you with you at night what happened during the sessions. Um, we have code, we have live trading sessions yesterday. So for those of you who are Trader Club members, if you can do me a favor right now, put into the chat, put into the Zoom call chat, tell me if you liked or hated the live trading session. I'll give you, and I'm watching all of you. Right, so I'll give you a quick, quick 30 seconds. Tell me if you liked or hated that, 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 that live trading session. Right, so it's, it's really there to help you uh, know how to trade the news. It's really there to help you, uh, guide you through that trading session to make sure not only do you make money, you don't lose money as well. Okay, um, so we have trade signals. So Daniel fires out the trade signals on the Telegram channel. If you are following those trade signals on the Telegram channel, it's really just blindly following. If you are looking at the trade signals and you want to know why we entered those trade signals, a lot of the information is here. Let me find one example. Um, so here, Daniel goes sell US CAD at this price, stop loss, take profit levels. The analysis is there telling you why you want to buy it. The system, the logic behind buying into a trade signal um, is there. The trade levels are there. You know, Lewis has been telling us why he's get grown confidence in terms of the trading sessions. All the different news and sharing of trade ideas. If you trade alone at home and you need a little bit of help, you know, as someone to give you a feedback on whether your support resistance lines are right, uh, whether you want to uh, adjust get into a trade or not, this is where you would come to get your ideas and your feedback, right? So that was a lot of information, a lot of support, a lot of um, ideas on LCMS Traders Club. You know, look for us there in Facebook, search LCMS Traders Club. It is a private group. So if you want to join, it's $49 a month or $199 a year. $49 a month, you can quit anytime. $199 a year, one-time payment join up for a year. To me, no brainer, join for a whole year. All right. Um, let me see any other questions. I've got screaming kids of this as well. All right. So um, I'll pass it back to Kenneth. Yep. Thanks, thanks, Jim, so much. I really like your sharing session on all the quick summary to give us a refresh memory of uh, what we have uh, did for the past whole week. So as we are coming close to this session, I'd like to launch a poll to see what is the top of this session. Uh, give me a second. Oh. Yeah, I have launched a poll. And please help me to see what is the, how, how do you feel about this session? And by the way, a, rec a recording of this video will be uploaded in the LCMS uh, YouTube channel. So thank you all for joining the session today. And uh, please fill in the phone to let us know uh, what's the feedback of this session. So on next Monday, next Monday, we'll be talking all about Aussie and Kiwi. So we we'll hope to see all of you again. Yeah, thanks. Um, have a good Labor Day for well, all of you who are on Labor Day holidays. Um, trade well, trade safe.
probably not much trading happening today. I would say, you know, look forward to next week. I think next week is going to be a huge week of trading. Um, we have a lot of news coming up next week as well. So I look forward to seeing you all at a currency call next week. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.